Hello everybody, it's Weather Outlooks, and today we'll be going over um, several things in this video. Um, first off, we're going to be going over some winter storm potential over the Rocky Mountains, um, mainly for Wyoming, Colorado, and Montana. And then, once we're done with that, we're going to take a look at some um, potential severe weather in the central United States, um, particularly for Oklahoma, Kansas, and Texas. And then, uh, once we're done with that, that'll be, and then we'll look at some snow totals as well for this upcoming snowstorm. So, let's get right into it. So, first of all, let's go ahead and start with the snowstorm. Um, we'll go ahead and zoom into the north central United States. Actually, matter of fact, we'll go to national view. Um, so, um, here what we're going to look at is some precipitation type and see, just get an idea of where these storms are going to go. Um, so, this is current conditions according to the GFS model. Um, this is current conditions right now. We got a little low pressure over there um, in uh, just north of Montana. Um, that is aiding some of um, showery activity over um, Nevada, Mo Idaho, Montana, and Wyoming. Um, and if we look to the east, we got some showery slash thunderstorm activity for the um, southeastern United States. And in this area right here, there is some uh, tornado potential uh, for Nashville, Kentucky, northern Mississippi, northern Alabama. Um, and we might actually look at some radar view of that stuff going on, but that'll be later on the video. Um, so, yeah, let's go and take a look at the future now, see what's going on. So, um, what's going to happen is we're going to have a little little storm develop over the mountains in this area. It's going to develop. It's going to give a little bit of snow for the Rocky Mountains, particularly for um, Wyoming, Colorado, and little parts of Montana. Um, we're going to watch as that storm kind of fires up. It's going to get a little bit of snow, uh, but it'll be just lingering snow showers and it won't be too significant. Um, we will have a slight potential for some severe weather up north right around now in this area right here. Um, we'll have a slight potential for some severe weather, isolated severe weather, nothing to be worried about. Um, and the conditions are very, very very limited up there so um if anything develops it'll be really short-lived and won't have very much structure to it and so yeah nothing to really be crazy worried about but definitely be on the lookout uh, but here's what's catching my eye um so um we're gonna look at the snowstorm first and then some severe weather so right around the same time frame as the snowstorm or the um, low pressure system the big storm enters the coast of the Pacific Coast. We also have a low pressure system in the southern southern United States setting up a little tornado event for Texas and Oklahoma at the same exact time as this one's making landfall. And um, you can see in that circle I drew mainly for this area right here. If you watch, you can see some uh, greens popping up that is resembling some pretty strong thunderstorms at least for the environment that is favorable or the environment that they're developing in. Anyways, um, so let's take our eyes to the northwest United States, uh, Oregon and Washington. And we're going to watch as the storm makes its way on shore. It will produce some heavy snowfall for the Cascade Mountains. Um, and as it moves off to the east, it will get really cold and the low should dip down into the 20s for most of the um, the Cascades and east of the Cascades, it will dip down to the 20s and potentially even the teens for the higher elevations. Um, and then, um, so yeah, that's going to be pretty much what's going to be expected over there. And then um, as this storm makes an exit, um, it, the snowfall will become more widespread as we get that moisture flow starting to end. Um, but then that will um, leave Oregon. And then this is where the snowstorm will begin to develop. As you can see right around here, you can see heavy snowfall developing for Wyoming. And this will develop and become more widespread for these areas right here. But it will weaken very quickly as the cold air leaves the air. You can see widespread heavy snow all the way from northern Montana all the way down into the northern New Mexico mountains. 
um, particularly for Albuquerque and stuff like that. Um, but the heaviest snow, according to the GFS, is kept in a corridor between northern Wyoming and um, central Montana right there. Seems to be the heaviest snowfall. As we get the heavier rain developing in front of this storm in this area, this cold air is going to begin to get sucked back up into Canada. And um, while that happens, the snow will shrink in size. As you can see, it has shrunken to a little patch of snow over um, Wyoming and Montana. And it will get smaller and smaller as time goes on. Now it is confined in this little blob of heavy snow over um, northern Nebraska. And then that will slowly but surely disintegrate into a little tiny little speck of heavy snow and then that will completely convert over to rain as this storm exits the area um, but also at the same exact time as this snowstorm is beginning to get the worst um, we also have severe weather beginning to be bad and um, right in that area you can see that line of thunderstorms um, developed from southwestern Texas all the way up into Kansas and um, if we plot a little sounding in front of these storms, you can see, let's go ahead and right there, you can see that the conditions are very favorable for some pretty tornadic storms, um, potentially even strong supercells could be embedded in within this squall line. Um, if you look, 71 dew points, which is very, very, very good for thunderstorm development. Um, and a lot of uh, moisture in the atmosphere, which is going to help these thunderstorms out a lot. And then, um, as you can see, the CAPE profile, or the convective available potential energy, is decent. Um, it could be better, but for this time of year, it is decent, and it is workable. Um, especially for the, amount of inst or for the amount of wind shear that we have in the atmosphere. As you can see right there, the thing that I just outlined... Um, these bars resemble how much wind shear there is in the atmosphere and those bars are super super long and those are resembling really strong winds in the um, atmosphere and then these little um, flag looking thingies these are resembling the direction um, so the conditions are setting up for some pretty favorable conditions for tornadoes and um, a few potentially long lived according to the um, GFS, you can see possible hazard type is marginal tornado, so it is putting this tornado risk as a possibility. And then if we look at the supercell composite down here in the um, bottom left corner, you can see supercell composite 12.2, and it is highlighted in red for a reason because that is high supercell composite, um, and it does not normally happen. We do have a little bit of a cape or a, C, a sin developing. Um, but the, since these storms are already developed, um, according to the GFS, this sin will not hinder development any bit. Um, but anyway, so this is obviously a little far out, so don't take anything for granted yet. Um, we still are about 156 hours out from the actual event taking place. So this will likely have major changes to it as we get closer, but... The GFS, in my opinion, does do a reasonably good job at predicting what could potentially happen and what we could see in the future. Um, and this is kind of what it's going for. And the only reason I'm kind of showing you guys this is because the European model, if we look at the European model, it is saying the same thing um, for the snowstorm thing as well. As you can see... Um, it is showing, because there's going to be three days of severe weather. The first day is going to be on Mo Sunday night. Um, as you can see here, if you look down in Texas, you can see a line of severe thunderstorms have developed from Kansas all the way into southern Texas. And the worst of the storms taking place in this chunk right here is going to be the worst of it, in my opinion. Um, but that is where they are. the European is expecting it to develop, to develop. And if we plot a little sounding just in front of those storms you will see that the environment is plenty favorable for some pretty intense development for thun uh, for thunderstorm development you can see there that large cape value not incredibly strong but it is workable especially with the amount of shear that we have in the atmosphere once again 
Um, this system is going to be pretty potent. Um, but, so yeah, that will move off. And then the second system will roll in. And I'll have another. You can see an even more significant, according to the colors of this of the European, it shows a pretty intense squall line right there. And if we can plot a little sounding right in front, as you can see, the, the conditions aren't as favorable as Sunday night's system, but it is still um, pretty favorable for some tornadic development. The cape is reasonably decent. The wind shear is very, very good. And the possible hazard type, tornado. So it is showing that uh, possible hazard. And then you can see as the same time this storm is rolling through and intensifying in Texas, we have this major snowstorm blowing up over the Rocky Mountains. So this is going to be a really interesting storm, a very significant and major snow storm. And um, it will be the first snowstorm that the Rocky Mountains are not the Rocky Mountains, but the uh, uh, northern Great Plains will likely see for this year. Uh, we will likely see several others to come in the, uh, the weeks ahead of this one, so keep a lookout for that. Um, and then while we're here, we'll go ahead and take a look at these um, snowfall accumulations and um, just take a look and see what, what we could be expecting in Oh my god, every time I look at it, it gets worse and worse. Um, you can see for areas of Oregon along the Cascades, around 5 inches of snow along the Cascades um, and then the mountains up to 10 inches. And we could see some widespread light accumulations for all of southern, central, and central Oregon there. You can see those light grays are resembling um, light accumulations up, up to an inch. And uh, we could see our first snowfall for some areas in central Oregon. But as we head east, it does get worse and worse and worse. And when I mean worse, I mean a very, very big difference. So you could see 62 inches of potential snowfall for the um, mountains of the Rockies. You can see that blob potential over Wyoming there. And then for Yellowstone, about 8 inches potential. But just a really major snowfall for uh, snowfall accumulations are expected with this snowstorm, um, and of course it is going to be widespread. As you can see, snowfall is going to be widespread all the way from no central Nevada all the way up through Montana, and potentially even into northwestern Nebraska, and then down through New Mexico, and then. Uh, through northern Arizona so it's gonna be a big blob of snowfall um, so I will say this is gonna be a pretty significant snow snowstorm um, first one of the year as well and let's look at the CPC just see what they have to say for this severe weather as well here's the day five problemistic outlook they will update this tomorrow morning and I will make another video tomorrow night as well um, but here's what they got to say about this um, you can see that yellow area is where they're expecting severe weather this is on Sunday night. I will think that I do think that they will shift this a tad to the west, um, just because of the later model scenarios have come out. And I do think that there is a slight chance um, that they add a enhanced risk somewhere in this area, um, and then in the next few days, as we get newer model out. Outlooks to come out just because the supercell composite and the conditions look pretty favorable for some widespread tornadoes to take place in that box that I just drew. And so that's kind of um, what I'm going for. And then day seven is going to be a little bit more west. You can see a little bit larger area where they're expecting severe weather. And um, I do think that this area as well could see another enhanced risk. And if that enhancer does happen, it will probably happen somewhere in this area. And it will be a large enhanced risk as well, as it's going to be a large squall line. So, anyways, um, I think this is going to, going to be it for today. Um, I hope you're having a great day. Uh, don't forget to like and subscribe if you like my videos. And comment if you think I should improve anything in my videos. Have a great day.